so fun to be here. I've, uh, I've enjoyed this conference. I feel like I'm back in Australia. So good to be able to join you and thanks for inviting me. And I didn't even have to fly like 15 hours. So this is awesome. Um, really jazzed and excited by all of the um, experiences and stuff that you've sent me and uh, you know, through this beautiful convention today. So I'm gonna talk a little bit of science today, but I've always already been reminded by you that you know, people connect with people, right? They don't connect with products. And as sad as I am to admit it, people don't necessarily connect with science either, right? But as Giselle said, if you connect really innovative products with consumers, then you've got something magic. You've got an opportunity there. And that's my job. That's what I love about my job as Vice President of Research and Development at NuSkin, where I've been for 25 years. Because once you find the best company in the world to do research and development for, why would you go anywhere else? So uh, I'm really enjoying the work that I do. And I hope I can share a little bit of science with you today. But remember, people connect with people. So why am I talking science? Because you need to understand or at least have a conviction that the products that we do have are meaningful, that they're based on good innovation, that they are science based. You don't have to know the science. But if you have that conviction, then as a person, you're going to shine that light, you're going to have that confidence, and you'll be able to share that with your friends, right? People to people. So I know that you think I'm going to just start talking about genetics. But I'm going to start talking about my love of motorcycle riding. Here is my friend Frank. I don't know if you can see him here. Um, the lights a little funny. Hopefully he'll focus in a little later. You know, I first met Frank when I was riding a motorcycle. I was in my 40s with a group uh, riding around Utah. And I said, hey, John, who's the new guy? And he said, oh, that's Frank. He says, he looks good on that gold wing, doesn't he? And my friend said, yeah, you know, he's in his 90s, this guy, Frank. How amazing is that, right? So I uh, lost touch with Frank. He was a really interesting guy. Couldn't believe he was riding a bike at 90. And about, ooh, it was 11 years later, he moved into my neighborhood. And here's a picture of me and my kids sitting with him. He still had great cognitive function, remembered who I was, uh, you know, just uh, completely uh, active physically. And I thought, you know, there's an example of a guy who ages in a healthy way. He's the example that we sort of really uh, aspire to, not just because of the great age that he attained, but because of how healthy he was. And, and uh, you know, he lived to 104 years of age. And uh, I never knew him to be sick. He was just healthy. And that's kind of the goal. And that's something behind what we do at New Skin. So again, I'm not going to start with genetics. Right? I'm not going to start with the gene chip. We're going to start with what the philosophy is at New Skin and, and what guides us as we strive to help people to age in a healthy way. And believe it or not, it starts with nutrition science. So here's the bubble right here. The first bubble is nutrition. And you might think, well, how on earth does that impact the way that you age? I mean, most people today aren't sort of uh, getting nutritional deficiency diseases. So, so we're not talking about that. We're talking about health. So how does that impact aging? Well, let me give you an example. I don't know if you've heard of this concept of triage. But this is, um, you know, it was developed, uh, you know, 100 years ago or more, a couple of hundred years ago where if a hospital, for example, is overrun with patients, then you have someone called the triage nurse who gets in front of the, all of the patients and works out you know, from most serious, completely serious, uh, absolutely needs a ton of attention, but would probably take all of the hospital staff half the day to take care of. And then you've got this other group on the other end of the spectrum who are uh, you know, not so sick. Crikey, mate, that's just a flesh wound. Don't worry about that. Put a Band-Aid on it, you'll be fine. Then there's the guys in the middle that you can help. This is called triage. And the body does the same thing. A famous scientist by the name of Bruce Ames uh, has studied this concept and proven it with a really nice systematic group of studies that he's done. And what he showed was, if your body is marginally deficient in a certain nutrient, 
and I don't mean grossly deficient, but if it's a little bit short, then your body has to decide where to send that nutrient, right? Because each nutrient, whether it's vitamin C or whether it's calcium, it has more than one function in the body. So the body has to decide if it's a little bit low, where do I send that nutrient? And of course it will send it to the systems of the body that will keep you alive today, but it will be at the expense of how well you age. It's kind of like, I'm going to keep filling my car with petrol, but I'm not going to worry about the oil changes, right? You need to do the oil change and you know, maintain the car as well. Let me give you a quick example. If you don't get enough calcium, you get some, but not enough. You all know what happens, right? You all know that it impacts your bone density. Your bones aren't as healthy as they could be. And you probably start to notice this down the road as you age. Why is this? Because the body has already decided that calcium is more important in your neuromuscular systems to help you move, to help you think. Every nerve impulse requires calcium and some of these other electrolytes. So that's how the body works. And just so that you know, if you're marginally deficient, you'll pay the price down the road in how healthy your aging is. So how do you ensure that you are never marginally deficient? Eat a healthy diet, live a good lifestyle, and just for insurance, this is why we produce these amazing products like our Life Hack, which is a comprehensive nutritional formula, right? Provides the optimum amounts of the essential and beneficial nutrients that you need for health today, but also long-term health. So that's something that most people don't know. Now you know how to age healthy with nutrition. So what's the next thing that we focused on? And this is one area that especially during the 80s and 90s, became a really uh, popular area. People started to understand how important it was to get out antioxidant nutrition. So this was born in the science of free radical biology. This uh, whole new way of looking at biology, which is that there are subatomic particles that can actually be biologically active, that they can damage cells like the DNA and the cell membranes and uh, impact how healthy you age. So this became a, uh, you know, a great topic of research uh, during the 90s. Uh, one of the founders of this area of research was Dr. Lester Packer. And Dr. Packer actually was on our scientific advisory board. We knew him for many years and contributed to the science and understanding that we had there. Now, to show you um, how dedicated we were to this area of science, we started to look not only at the obvious antioxidants like vitamin E and vitamin C, but some of these plant nutrients that we get that uh, are like the pigments that we find in the plants, the carotenoids. So uh, as you can see from this list here, lots of different forms of vitamin E. So this is an area, this is kind of interesting because, you know, just when you think about vitamin E, most people think, oh, it's just one thing. Uh, there are a lot of traps for young players. We have a team of scientists at, at New Skin, about 30 PhDs, about 75 scientists overall. The PhDs consist of nutritionists and exercise physiologists, experts in free radical biology and these areas so that we can understand, well, there's more than one form of vitamin E. There are about eight forms, at least in nature. And we also understand that the natural forms provided by nature are a little bit different from those that you would have to synthesize in a lab. So we know what to do and uh, you know, what levels are important, what the ratios are of these important molecules. So let me show you this other area of interest, and that is some of these natural antioxidants that many people don't even recognize as um, maybe a normal vitamin and mineral that you'd see on a list. Here are the carotenoids. These are the colors that are found in nature. These are amazing molecules because if you eat a diet rich in fruits and vegetables, you're gonna have a lot of these in your body. They're going to um, sort of join up with the cell membranes of your body in every organ of your body and protect you from free radical damage and do other things, uh, important functions in the body, which is really quite amazing since, you know, again, you don't see this on the World Health Organization list of essential nutrients, but they're very important. And they could be considered a biomarker, or in other words, an indicator of how much fruits and vegetables you're eating. And there are tests that doctors can do. They can, you know, take some blood or some tissue and, uh, you know, take it to the lab and after, uh, a couple of weeks or a month or so and a few thousand bucks, you can find out you know, what the levels are like in your body. 
But we came across some technology a few years ago, which we have developed. And this is a technology that uh, uses light to measure these carotenoids in the body. So now we have a non-invasive way of measuring. Now, Giselle also mentioned that uh, not only should you have amazing products and you connect those with entrepreneurs for an amazing opportunity, but there's also an element of emotion. And I got to confess once again, that there's not too much emotion in science, right? Uh, I can present you with bar graphs and pie graphs. And I'm going to do that in a minute too. Uh, I get emotional, but I'm sure most of you don't. But an emotional sort of uh, impact will help people to change their lives. You may remember in Australia, when I was growing up as a teenager in the 70s and 80s, <clears throat> um, the, the way that the government got kids to stop smoking was with this campaign that was, kiss a non-smoker and taste the difference. Remember that? Now that's obviously not a very scientific campaign. It was more emotional, but it had a much bigger impact than all the bar graphs about human health and statistical epidemiology, right? So this is what I love about the biophotonic scanner. You can scan someone <clears throat> while you scan them, you have a conversation with them and uh, you can see <clears throat> where you stand in terms of your antioxidant score. Now we've, this is a representative of so many scans that we've done over 7 million scans here. Incredible, right? And you can see it's kind of this skewed bell curve. This is the kind of science that makes me kind of emotional, but probably not you. But you can see that the average person is scoring around, you know, 20 to 30,000. These are people that may be a little overweight, people that are smoking. And this is, uh, uh, we've understood now from scanning over 7 million people and from looking at the scientific literature that there's a strong connection with the level of carotenoids and your lifestyle and your diet, just as we predicted. So if you eat more fruits and vegetables, you're going to be higher up on the, scar the score here, right? You take a good supplement that contains these antioxidants as well as eating a diet rich in fruits and vegetables and avoiding smoking and unhealthy habits, you're going to be up here in the blue and the platinum zone, which is where we really need to be. So this, my friends, is an emotional connection. This is what we've been looking for. It's based on sound science, but most people that get scanned first are kind of mad. They're like, what? I go to the gym every day. I've got huge biceps. Why is my score high? I expected it to be high. Or, uh, or other people have a different kind of emotion like, whoa, dude, I scored blue. I'm so happy about that. I thought I might score high because I eat a lot of fruit and vegetables. I'm going to keep it up, right? So this is an emotional connection that helps people to change lives. That's what we're all about. People to people, being a force for good, helping people to change lives. Now, let's get to this next part. What about genetics, right? The scanner and the life pack, uh, you know, this nutrition and antioxidant science really have represented the culmination of the most comprehensive approach to anti-aging by new skin up until recently. But when we started to consider genetics, that's really when we opened up some really nice new uh, sort of innovation. Now, we know that the DNA code is fixed for life, right? But it's not just about the code, right? It's the sentences that are being spoken. It's the volume of those sentences. And we know that uh, this expression of the code is, is impacted by our lifestyle. It can be influenced and changed. This is the new paradigm. So it's not just about the genes that you got from your mom and your dad, but how you might influence those genes for the most successful outcome in the way that you age. And this has led us then to what we call age lock science. Now, where did this come from? It came from a lot of places, but I'm most fascinated with this story about the biosphere, where this guy named Roy Walford, who was a researcher and a doctor, came up with this idea of putting humans inside this um, biosphere, this dome that was sealed off from the rest of the world, and uh, see how long they could live there, kind of like uh, maybe practice of going to Mars or something. Now, um, interestingly, they very soon found that uh, they weren't able to produce enough food. 
but Roy Wofford was aware of some science that showed that humans maybe don't need quite as much as we are getting in our modern diets. Maybe we overeat a little bit. And in fact, he saw a lot of research that showed that a more strict nutritional regimen actually leads to healthier humans. And so he convinced the people to stay there in, the, uh, in that biodome. So they stayed in there from September of 91, which is about the time I was in the middle of my PhD, to uh, September of 93. They stayed there two years. Um, eventually, they got a little bit on the hungry side and, and broke into their emergency cache of uh, food, and it was kind of all over. But we learned a lot from that. And there was a scientist that was working with that team. His name was Richard Weinrich. And we actually started working with him to look more into how certain strict nutritional regimens can impact the way that we age. That was part of the research that we did over a period of six years as we started to uh, research, again, what nutrients can influence the way that our genes speak to us and help us to age in the most healthy way. And of course, part of that was using this beautiful thing here called the gene chip that can measure gene expression, right? The level of activity of each of the 25,000 genes that are in your body. And I just want to tap the camera because so many incredible products have come through my screen today. I'm joining the team. So let me show you some of the results of this. Again, you don't have to understand the science completely, but I want to share this with you. Here we have um, a heat map <clears throat> that comes from this new science called bioinformatics. Basically, what we did was, uh, all right, looking at the left side here, um, you can see on the left, we call it the y-axis, right? It's that line that's going up and down on the left side. You can see green there. This is typical aging. This is uh, the gene expression pattern, represents thousands of genes in the human body. And we can measure those. And that's what we did with the gene chip. That's why it took six years and millions of dollars to look at an, a pattern of gene expression that represents normal aging. Now, I remember that I talked about strict dietary regimens that help you to sort of age in the best way possible, and that impacts your genes. So then looking again at that left side, you see orange and you see red. Now, orange represents healthy aging, right? It's this strict regimen. This is the best example that we could find of how you would age healthy, and that's the gene pattern that would, uh, gene expression pattern that represents it. Have you noticed that it's kind of mixed up with the red, which is uh, feeding ordinary people the age lock blend. Now, why is that mixed up there? Interestingly, there's this, again, this new statistical science. It's, it's about big data, right? Because every gene chip has 40,000 data points. It's measuring all of those uh, genes in the body and the level of expression. And imagine doing hundreds of experiments with all sorts of different nutrients. We're talking about, you know, thousands of gene chips which costs $500 each, by the way. Um, this is a lot of time and a lot of research, right? And so bioinformatics is that statistical computer science that is able to do a rigorous statistical analysis of the differences that you see. And from the graph, you can see that the computer and the bioinformatics science could not tell the difference between healthy aging and those individuals that were fed the age lock blend. Isn't that amazing? And so you see three panels here that kind of represent, represent different tissues in the body. So on the left, you see the brain, the right, the muscle, uh, or it's the middle of the muscle and the right, the heart. And you can see it's the same, that the computer is not able to differentiate between the age lock uh, blend of ingredients and the healthy aging pattern of gene expression. Well, maybe you don't understand all of it, but hopefully you will get a passion that the science is there. Let's look at the next slide then. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll move it across. And this is just a different way of looking at the same thing, okay? Um, it's like getting a second opinion from the doctor. We went to a different bioinformaticist and we downloaded all of the raw data to this guy that was in Europe, who again does big data for biological data. And you can see uh, four different kinds of spheres here. So what you see is purple, that sphere, it's like three-dimensional space. It's called a principal component analysis. It's this branch of bioinformatics, where again, we wanna make sure that there are no biases in the data, that there are no mistakes. 
And so this pulls it out and it says, yes, this is what, if you look at the purple, this represents sort of a, a young individual and their gene expression pattern. And now what does typical aging look like? That's that blue sort of cigar shaped circle there in three dimensional space. Now the green is healthy aging. Again, this strict nutritional regimen that leads to the best possible way to age, which is associated with this gene expression pattern that is very unique. Now, when we fed the age lock blend, we were obviously looking to mimic exactly that green uh, sort of uh, uh, blimp right there. Uh, we got the red. So you can see it's not perfectly super in, uh, superimposable, but we were pretty darn excited about that because that's pretty close, right? It showed us that we were onto some really new, amazing innovation in age lock science. So, uh, so I hope that that helps you to understand this, uh, this third area in the bubble, which is age lock science, gene expression science, right? So, this is fairly topical. So let me uh, share with you an article that I found in one of my wife's beauty and health magazines. Uh, this came out in October in Star Magazine uh, last year. And uh, I loved this article. It was really interesting because uh, it's quoting quite a lot the scientist from Australia called David Sinclair. You may remember, if you guys are on top of the science, that he's the guy that discovered uh, the impact of some natural compounds like resveratrol on um, epigenetics or which is what we've been talking about in a way, which is uh, impacting gene expression patterns. And, you know, he says up here, 30 years ago, we didn't understand what causes aging, how the body controls the pace of aging, or how to measure it. Now we know all three, and it's happened only in the last few years. And uh, what I loved about this article was it was really all about beauty. Uh, it wasn't really, uh, and, and in the middle here, you see this picture of this girl and uh, her name is, I guess, Busy Phillips. And she's like, she's got one of those apps on the telephone, right? Where you can uh, take a picture of yourself and then see what you look like when you age, you know, like I'm going to age myself 10, 20 years. What do I look like? And she is laughing to herself. She's going, ha ha, look at me, laugh, LOL, I'm old, right? Because young people today, they don't even take aging seriously. And why is that? Well, really, because there is this hope that science will discover ways to help change the pace of aging. We're not talking about turning the clock backwards or making you live to 150. Just think of Frank. His pace of aging was just great. It's not how old he lived, but how healthy he was all the days of his life. And that's incredible. That's the kind of science that people hope is around the corner. And this is kind of a high expectation and it's high science. And I believe that this is the kind of science that we've been doing at New Skin for 30 years, basically, because we've combined nutrition and free radical biology or antioxidant science and this gene expression science. So when I read this article, it really made me proud to be part of this company that has such foresight and such an amazing team. I love our New Skin family, but we also have an amazing New Skin family working in the corporate offices in the laboratories in, uh, in Utah and in China and, and previously in Wisconsin at the genetics labs. So we're doing some exciting stuff. So what's next? You look at the gene expression and you say, well, is it gonna have an impact on human aging really? And so, you know, we thought, well, how do we do this? Let's do this experiment and we will, uh, we'll have to gather a couple of thousand people and we will control their lives for the next 50 years or so. We'll make them take this product and, you know, control them very well and then see how well they age. Well, that's not really very practical, is it? But there are other ways, there are models that you can use. And it turns out that skin is a great model for how you age. You know, uh, aging scientists, they call them gerontologists, right? These guys can look at the human skin, the face, how it's aging, and they can tell really how fast your body is aging by how fast your skin is aging because it's this big organ that represents the rest of the body. So we uh, decided to find our favorite, uh, uh, you know, really well qualified dermatologist uh, contract research organizations that could do controlled studies for us. And uh, the task was to take the age lock blend and see, you know, measure all sorts of parameters in the skin, challenge the skin a little bit, 
see how well it's holding up to the things that would normally try to push against you to, to maybe speed up the aging process and see if we can change those parameters. So this slide here is one such study that we did, a clinical study. And you can see here um, on the top panel was without age lock um, Y-span and then below with youth, right? So the age lock blend. And uh, this was where we challenged the skin with um, kind of like a little mini sunburn. And you can tell how well the body is able to push back against these aging kind of parameters by uh, how much redness there was and how far outside the blue circle that redness went. And so this showed us, actually it was a great, um, I still remember the meeting that we had with the dermatologist after she did this study. She said, you know, we've achieved things like this before with topical things, but we've really never seen such an amazing impact on the skin with a product that you would take from the inside. And I think this is where the magic is, right? At New Skin, where we have these two areas. We've got skin and we do that so well. And then we have also nutrition, wellness from the inside. And we do that so well. And it was Sandy and Blake and Steve that realized very early on, back in the early 90s, that even with the best skincare products, if you don't take care of your body from the inside, then your skin, your hair, your nails won't be as healthy and as young as they should look from the outside. I can't believe they thought of this so many years ago, but that gave birth to our first nutrition company. And those of you who have been with the company a long time, like Giselle will know that it used to be called Interior Design Nutritionals because beauty comes from designing from the inside first. So this study just showed really nicely uh, sort of the culmination of the gene expression research. And uh, let's look at some other things too. Uh, we were able to take skin samples. This takes dedicated uh, subjects in the study because you have to do what's called a punch biopsy. It sounds about as pleasant as, uh, as it is. They take really a sample of the skin and it even requires a stitch or two afterwards. So this is a great study. And you see on the right side panel here, the average number of damaged cells. So those that took, again, the age lock blend had far fewer damaged cells as a result of this insult to the body. And then how does that look when it comes to the body, the skin? Well, here we see radiance, texture, overall appearance. This was dermatology assessment. And then uh, you can see the difference there is the improvement, right? And, uh, Oops, let's go back here. Yeah, stay there. Um, so people also were able to uh, assess for themselves radius, radiance and firmness. We saw elasticity of the skin, which is super important, right? You've got uh, um, another great measure of how youthful your skin is and, how, and the pace of aging in your body. And the elasticity increased from a number there, 32 up to 41.4. This is done completely objectively with a, with a skin measuring device. So you know, a great study that shows an impact on skin. That's what I love about, uh, you know, uh, this uh, area of research that we're doing. Now, we also showed some research on the brain. We had, uh, we did at least two studies on the brain and these were studies that took years to do. This one here hasn't been published yet, but showed uh, that individuals taking this age lock blend had improved uh, attention, memory, error detection, um, improvements in some of these cognitive tests that we did and we also did brain scans to show how the brain was communicating, you know, certain portions with the other portions. This will be published hopefully soon. We've been working on it for a long time, guys, and I apologize that it's not out yet, right? But the next study, this slide right here, this one actually was just published. And this was a, where we measured key uh, parameters or key um, uh, levels of certain very important uh, brain mediators like glutathione and certain antioxidants that play an important role in brain activity, right? Neuroprotection, detoxification. They found that uh, there were uh, really nice changes in these. Now, those bar graphs, again, don't connect with people very well, do they? But uh, let me assure you that uh, this is some pretty exciting science that just validates the stuff that we've been doing with age lock science. We have age lock science, but we also have really nice personalization, right? We have this, uh, this way of helping to 
change the pace of aging in a healthy way through nutrition, antioxidant science, and, uh, and gene science. And then we have all of these other targeted products that you can get in Australia, New Zealand, and uh, Southeast Asia, all around the world. Right? It varies a little bit from country to country, but these are targeted nutritional products that you can use to help support, again, beauty and wellness from the inside. So I hope that today I've helped to increase your passion so that uh, person to person, you will shine a little bit brighter with confidence, knowing that uh, at New Skin, we're doing some amazing innovation science. This is all for you. Uh, we love uh, working for this wonderful New Skin family. Thanks again for inviting me to your Pacific convention today. Mm -hmm.